Okay, so we're going to push through the center here. Let's just check our man out first. 1600, 1200. Okay, go on that basis. Let's just bring the knight out here. And they're moving a bit swift, so they obviously have it all nailed on. I don't know if they've gone backward. Do they feel like they're actually backward now with this pawn? Because this is potentially meant to challenge this pawn, so it might be that they go for a blocker here, which is unfortunately going to block this bishop. Interesting. Yeah, that's a strange setup for the pawns at this moment. Right, okay, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Let's just bring the bishop through here. Potential for attacking here. Can swing this knight up. Obviously, this pawn is going to drop, but it's nice to give them something to think about. Interesting. Okay, so he's gone now because I think they do believe this setup was kind of funny. But I'm going to castle anyway. They may be able to make something of it now. So he's wanting to get rid of our knight, so we can come back to where we came from. Now it's blocked the bishop from getting into activity here. Yeah, so like we said, it's going to come down and block. And now this poor bishop's really got no game. Yeah, which is a shame. So in essence, we would really look to try and open this up now. Okay, so then they take and then come back out with the knight. Or do we punish them and just leave that position like this so that his bishop doesn't get any play that's something i'm thinking about but is that like cutting my nose off to spite my face because if i go here sorry if i go here and then blocking my own bishop in still got a nice diagonal towards here so that's fairly comfortable but i suppose he's going to try and open up this pawn with the capture here got the dark square bishop looking a bit lively maybe get the queen up looking to try and attack this pawn here I think we I think we want to feel like we're punishing them by them blocking themselves in I'm actually going to go with this and try and attempt to I think he's going to move his knight and attack the bishop though yeah he's trying to come through he wants to get this pawn opened up yeah, so they've got a little bit of a fret going on. Mm-hmm. So we could move the bishop first. He's still going to potentially push down. If he does push down, we can take the pawn at that stage. Because he, he wants this pawn to be disappearing. I don't think there's anything I can potentially do, really, to avoid it. So even if we come here, he drops, he's saying, I want to get rid of this pawn. But maybe not, maybe not. Move out of the way. This might feel that's a bit useless now because he's not actually hitting anything. So we'd get, be getting a free pawn. I'm just bringing the bishop back for now. Take it out of the equation. Let's see how long we can keep this their own annoying pawn in this position. So we did mention this right at the very start. Okay, so he's developed his knight. Does that give us... Ch his knight's just going to come and attack the bishop though. Okay, we'll go here. The might not. So, ooh, he's coming round. He's not really got an outpost here. And he's not really got an outpost here. He's really not got space here. But what he has done is he's protecting this square. So if we come up, he's still wanting to get, but this pawn is then still going to be free for us to take. So I think I'm going to continue with this and potentially still trying to go for the bishop on this side here. Oh, he's come down for the bishop. We did say he was going to do that, didn't we? So we could take his knight off the board, queen comes in here. And at least we still kept this pawn here blocking their own way. Or we could just leave the bishop there and just attack his knight. Is there something better? I think that's the way to go. Don't really want to invite his queen into the party. Let's just attack. And oh, in fact, before we do that, can we take, open up the rook a little bit, putting pressure towards here. Hmm, that might be an idea. 
I know it doubles the pawns. Taken with the queen is fine, it's just that there's nothing opened up. There's no files opened up, is there? So I'm actually going to take with the pawn and try and open up something here, get some sort of activity going. Can envisage his queen is going to chomp in at the bit to come round here. So we're still trying to champion the fact that we're blocking this bishop with their own pawn. It's so tempting to just blast through here and open it up, but I feel with we need to try and keep some sort of punishment for their position. They've locked themselves down. So the knight's gone back again, but he's now looking to come round here. It might be that we might have to do it. Or do we come here with the queen? So this knight comes in. Even if he comes round here though, can't come here because this pawn's blocking. So I've got my pieces up. Ooh, this pawn's not protected, but I can't even get to it. Okay, I'm going to bring the queen here, making it look like I'm trying to do something forceful towards the king. Oh, he's doing stealth moves, so he's still hitting this area, trying to somehow get rid of this, but he's targeting my bishop. If I move the bishop, then I'm going to... He's just going to push down, isn't he? But does he push down? If we go here, I think he's going to push here. I might as well just let him take that. Double the pawns on this side. Opening up this side as well, on this file. So I don't have an issue with that either. So his bishop is blocked in. His king is feeling very safe. I'm not happy with that. But... We could attack his knight, see if he wants to take, but then he's obviously going to open up the pawn here, which is okay for us. Yeah, we might do it at some stage, you know. If we did it now, his knight takes, pawn takes, then his pawn takes, we take. No, I don't like it yet. I think I've just keep them punished wonder what the eval bar is going to be saying I bet it's going you're not punishing them they're punishing you <laughs> swing around but it's not really going anywhere attack their queen pushes the pawn pushes the pawn and we don't go anywhere come here that's not really meaty is it because it's not got a follow on per se pushes the pawn push up no it's putting it into no man's land going to attack the knight for now obviously we're taking the knight here opening up some space so we've got two attacking areas at the minute, one on the in front of the king and one on the other side of the board. So we should be able to fashion something, surely. It's white square bishops looking to try and get in the game, but he's blocked off with the pawns at the moment. So I believe he's going to have to start championing the center to try and open it up. But like we said, we always try and work around the center. So... Let's see what the opponent's going to bring to the table on this side. And of course he's going to want to generate his rook at some point. Unless of course he's just going to push down here. Which might be a good one. That might have been a better one for them actually. Pushing this pawn here. And he's not going for that just yet. So it looks like he's attempting to push the pawn down here. It's also defending this pawn as well. So if we bring our knight back around again. So it's not doing much there. Yeah, we, do, 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 do. Shall we attempt this and then bring the queen back? He's just going to elevate his pawn. 
Let's attempt that and just bring the queen back. Just see if they can stretch the pawns a bit in front of his king. Definitely looking to attack here. So then this bishop's going to be in the center. We can push on here like this, I suppose. Oh, I've got a sneeze coming. them in a deep thing but they're still ahead on time this is zero increment 20 minute game so it'll be interesting to see but I think like I mentioned before I think this is a uh, quite a nice move for them they're looking to get a balance in the centre here, but I think this one is a lot better. Because then at least his rooks is going to be facing off ours if it all kicks off. Because mm -mm -mm -mm. he's. Oh, just going to say, because his queen can sit there, because if the our queen takes, his rook takes simply. Okay, so he's, I believe he's probably. He might be going for this small touch here, but he's not actually doing that. He's moved dead quick. He's had all that thinking time to think, and I don't know if I'm falling into a trap here or what. The bishop um, is not going to be doing anything fancy there. I think they moved there way, uh, way too quick because we can take the bishop off the board. I'm just waiting for them to actually resign now. Surely. Okay, so there's nothing that can take there, so we'll just take the bishop off the board. <coughs> All that thinking time, and they've resigned. Yeah, so the opponent put a lot of thought into that. That was the longest time that they had to think about that particular position. And it happens, this is what I'm saying, human chess. When you play human chess, me even for myself, you've seen my games where I just... <laughs> you know, I'm talking it through and I'm there, I've got my own rationale and then bang I didn't see their move, I didn't see that they could capture me and I lose out in move order and everything goes wrong, you know, the snowball effect just kicks into place and that's what happened in this particular game here just want to have a look at the analysis though to see how we were faring when we were basically looking at blocking down the initial pawn um, we don't need the arrows on for this okay so developed nice and steadily and they like we said for I felt with this type of position it felt kind of backward for black somehow it was like how are they now going to challenge um, the center so the bishop opens up and then they castle so we castled so they're actually it's minus 0 0.7 which is okay I mean it's nothing major but so we bring the knight down so it's then minus and then this pawn move here minus 0 0.2 um, that was like a big drop for them because they were like minus 0.9 and then I think the story falls for me in that well this is basically blocking off the activity of the bishop and then really how are they going to champion this center with their pawns uh, I was waiting to see it happen I just wondered if it was possible or not and so we're just doing steady away moves now so they are actually winning still well when we say winning it's very loose minus 0.7 at the moment 
So we develop the bishop, we have an idea of what we're trying to do. And then they move the knight across again. We didn't really know what it was looking to target, but they had some sort of idea. So it's showing plus 0.7.8 for us for that. Doesn't like our queen move. We are looking to attack this pawn here, so I didn't really see it being a problem. But then the knight jumps down and it gets it back to a minus 0.5. So we attack. So they are in they are doing okay. But for me, in my head, I'm going, the longer this goes on, I don't really see that the opponent is going to be able to take advantage of the space around our king. The gauge bar is obviously on their side still, and they move back again, it's minus 0 0.6. And we move our queen with the idea of trying to manage the half open file which we had helped set up then the knight moves again so they're still winning and then we move our knight and they're more winning now minus 1.4 but like we said our limit is minus 2 for us to really be um, concerned okay so they capture and we capture so we've now got two half open files for our pieces we moved the queen looking to exchange but we didn't really think they would do and they are still winning at this point minus 1.1 1, 1 .1, but nothing to be concerned about at this moment it's not hit the minus 2 mark yet and then this move was done too quickly kind of spoiled the party though really because I really wanted to see how this developed I wanted to see how much of a stranglehold this type of position really had on their play because now they've got two bishops and the bishops really don't have any play at the moment because they're kind of blocked off there's nothing much that they can actually do and we were looking at taking advantage of that further through the game so with it showing minus 0.8 um, in my head I'm, I'm thinking even now I don't think it's anywhere near that because of the blockages that they've got for these bishops Obviously, they, they can start challenging, pushing them down and that type of stuff. You know, pushing here, like we said, you know, uh, not, yet, not yet, not yet, obviously. Okay, so they brought the bishop here and we did wonder if we're falling into a trap. Had to make sure, just taking, does he have anything? And there wasn't anything clear, so then we took and that's when they resigned. And that gave us a plus 7.2. But... With human chess you are going to see mistakes but it's the ability to be able to take advantage of those mistakes as well. You know, I might have seen that bishop move and gone, okay so he's done that so I'll just move my knight out of the way. You know, these things do happen, you know, because they move fast or I'll just move it out of the way. But it's learning to stop, <laughs> not get into rote fashion with the narration, definitely and have a look at the position and see what you can actually do so that was a really interesting game I really really did quite like that but I really wanted it to go a bit further so I'm a little bit disappointed that that bishop move was made and um, I think it had more potential gauge bar showing it had potential with its minus 0.8 and I really wanted to kind of prove to myself well what sort of advantage does does it think it's got because um, during the game I'm, I'm believing I'm not doing too bad with my half open files and my flexible knights 